so, and in off from both, at least though, for Walden, the red ran safe. Both are very experienced, these two. Tough match to call. And that was a good part, but it was always going to be difficult to get the cue ball to go through far enough to be able to be on the black. And it was always going to be difficult to get the cue ball back down here off the green, but Walden's achieved it. That really is a top-class positional shot. So well struck. It's been a good week for Ricky Walden. He was the losing finalist in Group 5, beaten by Mark Williams. But in the semi-finals of that group, he came back from 2-1 down to beat Judd Trump 3-2. And Trump could have no recriminations whatsoever because he played two good safeties in frames four and five, and from both of them, Walden knocked in a cracking lung red and made a century. No century this time, though. The red away from the top cushion, and on for Dot. By the way, talking about Judd Trump, he has just won the third frame against Martin Gould. It looked for all the world as though Gould was going to complete a 3-0 victory. He was 2 0 ahead and 54 0 ahead in the third frame. But Trump has salvaged that, and who knows? They've had plenty of meetings, these two, in Championship League over the years. Last year, it was in Group 7. Walden won 3-1. In 2016, they played twice. In Group 4 and Group 5, Dot won 3-2 on both occasions from 2 on down. And they actually started their Championship League rivalry in 2009, nine years ago. Walden winning 3-1.
there's quite a history of excellent snooker from the loser in matches between these two, most notably two contests in which Dob prevailed, but in which Walden made plenty of breaks. These two crossed queues in the first round of the World Championship at the Crucible in 2015. Dot won 10-8, even though Walden had breaks of 78, 87, 104 and 135. And what about last year? Welsh Open in Cardiff, first round. Dot won 4-3 from 3-1 down. And poor old Ricky Walden was on the receiving end, despite making breaks of 50, 68, 99 and 104. After this, both of these two have got one more match remaining. Walden takes on Michael White over on table two in the, the second match this afternoon. Graham Dodd's last fixture is against Ben Wollaston, who currently is the wooden spoonist in the group. Quite a scrappy, uninspired opener. Just waiting for the, the touch paper to be lit. Well, fortunate there, Dot. Caught that red too thick. If Walden can catch the red on the nose next to the ball cushion and stun it, he'll get that cue ball in behind the green for a really good snooker. Didn't make the full ball contact required. Safety yes, snooker no.
I think it's a passage of play which reflects the importance of the match. Blue on the side cushion. The black pretty much out of commission as well. If someone's going to make a sizable break here, it will be hard work. Well, that flick did no harm. Having to play this red with Sai to coax it in. And by potting that one, he's basically freed up the pink to all of its natural pockets. For Graham Dott, it's straight from here to the Metrodome in Barnsley. He's involved in the China Open qualifying competition tomorrow, place tomorrow night, in fact. Against China's Meiji Wen. Ricky Walden's clocking on at the qualifiers at 9.30 in the morning on Monday, local time, against India's Aditya Mater.
really good contribution this with two of the three highest value colours not available So the break is 45, the lead is 34, but 43 still there. Almost an absolute rip snorter. Not just a really good pot. He nearly made the cannon which he desired on the black. Now that could have really opened things up. Now Walden here doesn't need to pot a colour. 33 behind, 35 on. So he could play safe if he wanted to. The obvious choice might be off the blue. Get the blue into open play, maybe even lay a snooker. Just turn the tables a little. I can assure you he did not try and pot the blue, but he got mighty close. They're going the distance on the other table. Judd Trump was 2-0 down and 54-0 down against Martin Gould. But he's now just about to draw level at 2-2. As Dot is very relieved to see the cue ball just come to rest behind the yellow. He looked at the plant on the black. He knew that wasn't going to be potted. He has got the, the wide deep into bulk, but where it's come to rest, what an absolute bonus that is. And bear in mind, Walden must make contact. Well, it's not a simple table by any means. Only two colours are on their spots, the yellow and the pink. But if Walden could somehow pot this last red, and bear in mind he needs either pink or black with it, the possibility of nicking the frame is still right there.
OK, then, the red is on, I think. Walden has got the angle where he can pot the red and avoid the green. If he can't avoid the green, can't see much point in taking it on, because, as we've said, he's got to pot either pink or black. Well, the green was avoidable. The only problem, the red went astray. And now Dot should wrap up the opener. Well, it wasn't the kind of frame you'd put on the highlight reel by any means. Very low scoring, although Dot's break of 45, considering limited options with colours I thought was a really well crafted contribution so Graham Dot leads Ricky Walden by a frame to nil and as I mentioned Judd Trump was well ahead in the fourth frame he had a, an unassailable lead and it's been converted so having been 2-0 down and on the verge of a 3-0 defeat in fact Trump is now back to 2-2 against Martin Gould and whoever wins that match, whoever wins the next frame, is going to be into the semi-finals. Judd Trump was the first player to book his semi-final place in both Group 4 and Group 5. Might well be the first player in Group 6 as well. While both players have left the floor for a moment, it gives me the opportunity to tell you about who's going to be involved in Group 7, which is coming up at the end of March. Actually, the day after the Players' Championship finishes up in Landudno. Obviously, we don't know the four players who will come from this group yet, but we do know the three new additions, and they are all exciting, talented players. Brussel and the other new entry will be a player who when he's on form makes the game look so so easy he sights the ball so quickly he pots them in a blur he's great to watch from Gloucester Rob Milkins so joining those three will be the fifth place player from this group the two losing semi-finalists and of course the losing finalist so group seven will be played on the monday and tuesday of that week and then the winners group will follow on the wednesday and the thursday so a couple of months hiatus but still for devotees of championship league it's going to be a, a good climax and something to look forward to However, the word good could not be applied to that break-off. <coughs> and yet the vagaries of snooker, indirectly, what was a terrible break-off from Walden has actually... seen him come to the table with a good scoring chance
didn't come quite hard enough, but I think it's one of those shots where he can pop the red and skim off the others. Trouble was, he didn't skim. He caught them quite thick. He could still maybe get through to pot the black, but this is a really tough one. Very thin. What a well-played shot that was, not just the actual pot itself, but also with running side to go into the bunch. the old branding iron three different kinds of spider this is one of the most ungainly implements it's possible to use but it serves a purpose providing extra elevation and reach at the same time Now, this kind of shot, with the red to right middle, it's one of those on your screen that looks simple enough, but it most certainly isn't. Catch that near jaw, the ball will be repelled. Same with the far jaw. Oh, nicely done. Not a great amount of pocket to aim for there. Again, a really nice recovery shot to middle. I honestly didn't think that black was in. It caught an awful lot of the far jaw. I thought he'd undercut it. I think Walden was concerned in the extreme himself because he stayed down on the shot. Frustrating for Walden, just one red away 
one additional red from putting the frame safe. The break looks like ending at 68. But with six reds left on the table, there's still 75 there. The one shot that Walden would never play here would be a safety off the red on the left-hand side cushion. He wants that there as his insurance policy. Well, this should wrap it up. Choice of a couple of reds. Both of them just a, a wee bit tricky because of the queuing, but this shouldn't be a problem. No positional ambition, and why should there be? That was frame ball. Dot now needs a snooker. Dot concedes having left another red and so a couple of chalk and cheese frames really the first one was scrappy and quite lengthy that one much quicker and cleaner Ricky Walden thanks largely to a break of 68 ties the scores it is one frame each and talking of tight scores and a, a tight contest that's also the case across the arena Judd Trump and Martin Gould, two frames each, and just one point separating them in the decider. Gould with a one-point advantage. And also the advantage of being at the table, scoring. Well, can you believe it? It was in for all the world. He used the green to make it a big pocket. And for some reason, it's just stuck on the edge of the pocket and wave it around before dropping. With that loss of position there, or at least loss of ideal position, you get the feeling there's more snooker left in that one. As soon as we have a verdict, we'll let you know. When you get deep into the second day of any group, all of the matches take on great meaning. Gould and Trump, whoever wins that, will be in the semi-finals. Signed, sealed and delivered. Who wins this one, they'll be looking quite healthy. Nothing guaranteed, but they'll fancy their chances.
Well, I can't see this going on for a great amount of time before they decide to re-rack the balls. You might see the, the look. Yeah, there you go. It was a, a stalemate. No point carrying on in those circumstances. Mutual agreement, as is now pretty much standard when it comes to re-racks. Very rarely do you see a referee dictate when a, a frame will be re-racked. Normally the players get their heads together and say, well, we're going nowhere, why not? The problem, of course, occurs when you have a stalemate and one of the players is nicely in front didn't matter there because it was nil nil no one had got an advantage so the re rack was the obvious thing to do but if someone's 30 or 40 in front and you get a stalemate that particular person would be loath understandably so to have a re rack So it's frame three, take two. Given that the white and the blue were so close together there, Walden did really well to get that amount of action onto the cue ball and also to avoid the ball colours. No, he could pot the green here, but what's three points? Far more valuable, a possible chance created by a snooker like that. Four penalties here. Dot left a red, but there was no position from it onto any colour. <laughs> Referee Rob Spencer making absolutely sure the cue ball is back in its original position. And having made the necessary recalibration 
on the escape. Dot just plays it to perfection. Doesn't even only hit the red. He hits it and leaves nothing on. Developments over on table two to report. I can tell you that Martin Gould has beaten Judd Trump 3-2. That's his fourth win in five matches, Gould. And so he's the first player through to the semi-finals. So that's the end of the morning session on table two. It's going to be around a 40 minute hiatus before play starts again there. Next up on that table, Judd Trump against Michael White. David Hendon will be commentating. So for the next 40 minutes or so, sit back and enjoy our only stream. This one. Very nicely done. Lovely contact. And that was a lovely contact of a different sort. Pile driving pot and a really good angle on the blue here to do some damage. Well, damage done. He's on the red at least. Two or three more have come out. And that does no harm. OK, the black isn't available immediately, but it will be quite soon. Vastly experienced Graham Dot when you think about it. 
40 years of age, and yet this is his 24th professional snooker season. Turned pro as a teenager, now as a veteran, still a hard man to beat. He doesn't play classical snooker, Graham Dot, but he plays effective snooker. Went for the plant, but with safety in mind and it's very safe the cue ball glued under the ball cushion Dot's been involved in 33 world ranking event quarterfinals, 16 semi finals, 7 finals, and he's won two of them the World Championship, of course, and the, the China Open. Well, it's four points away. Annoying in that regard I suppose but in terms of safety job done That really was asking a lot. It would have been an absolutely tremendous pot to knock that red in. As it is, a red's been left, a very easy opener. And if Dot can achieve position from this, avoid all of that traffic and all of the congestion at this end of the table, this might be a frame winning chance. Former world number two, that's his highest ever ranking, but he spent around a decade as a member of the top 16. That though is not a top 16 shot. Well, the blue has got the distinction of being the only colour now on its spot. saying that 
throughout his career, Dot has reveled in these kind of scrappy frames. But when they do go scrappy, he tends to earn quite a high percentage of them. He's got a good mindset in that regard. Well, that opens things up a little, gets the yellow off the cushion. And what's more, by making contact with the yellow, it's held the cue ball pretty close to that bulk rail, so this is not easy. Yes, Dot guilty of catching it too thick. Ricky Walden's always had the ability to strike a cue ball very sweetly. Good cue power, and that was demonstrated right there. He's actually a little unlucky. He's come dead straight on the black, or with not a great amount of angle, and he's queuing over a red. Well, and lucky with the previous positional shot there. Lucky. Really lucky. Playing from the jaws of the pocket, never easy. Dot did a good job. Now the angle he's got on the black, much more favourable. As indeed it is on the green. I don't think he can squeeze the cue ball past the first red to pop the second one. I think the only way he can do that is by applying a lot of side. Oh, and he does. And he's out far enough for the black. He's one of those players, Graham Dot, who can find a way.
Und hier. And what's most hurtful for Walden, these might well have been his. Now can Dot dislodge the three? No, he cannot. The break was 36. Dot's lead is now 33. 59 on. Walden. Under pressure. Over the years, one thing that Graham has been saddled with, completely wrongly in my opinion, certain people think he's a slow player. He most certainly is not. Another four points to the Scots total. I think it was because he was involved in that really marathon world final against Peter Ebden in 2006 but it wasn't his fault it wasn't his pace of play obviously Ebden is a, a very methodical player anyway but also because of TV schedules they only played six frames in the afternoon on the second day of the final so an awful lot of snooker had to be played at night anyway I can tell you this Graham Dot is not a slow player in no way shape or form He'll be a frustrated player after making no contact on those reds. Well, that's a pity. Couldn't really legislate for the in-off, and where he was taking it, he was going to be in behind the pink. Playing this kind of safety shot, Walden relying very much on the table. And the cue ball, as you saw, did not deviate.
Well conceived shot from Walden, trying to take the red, double it back and split the other two. The only problem, the cue ball played with a little too much pace and maybe Dot can slot this one in. Well, he didn't even try, just played safe. But it wasn't a good safety, was it? Whatever you do, don't hit the blue, that's the mantra. You have to say, in the match, Walden's not had the best of fortune. But he's got to set that aside now, get it out of his mind, and lay the most fiendish snooker imaginable. Well, two birds with one stone by playing the shot that way. Yes, he's obtained the snooker, but also he's taken the blue into the middle of the table. And because he's the chasing player, 36 behind, that makes sense for him. Snookers, by and large, are a means to an end. Players don't play them because of the penalty points they might gain. Obviously, that's a little bit of a, a bonus. Their intention is to create chances. And that's what Walden's done. Well, the kiss worked an absolute treat, not just bringing the red out, but also a good angle. 60. But even the most optimistic of pundits could not say this is an easy chance to run out. Yellow well off its spot. Brown, hard on that side cushion. So we begin on the colours with Walden 12 behind. Now that means yellow 24. to pink would be enough. Walden could somehow win this frame from nowhere. That could be the swing frame in the match. And who knows when we look back on this group in its entirety later on this evening, it might be the swing frame in the entire group. Well, a massive amount of side on the cue ball to try and get in behind the pink. But he's left the green. 
That said, though, Dot's lead has been erased to only 10. So he needs green, brown and blue. really vital moments not just in the frame but in the match and the bigger picture in the group Well, there, Walden to get in behind the Brown. And the result for Dot, he can have no complaints whatsoever. Dream result. Not only did he make contact with the Brown and not leave it on, it's actually quite a a complex safety for Walden. A safety which he almost made a real mess of. Cracking little shot that is. Potential tie turner. <coughs> okay then. Mr. Graham Dot, here's your chance. Already 13 to the good, so brown and blue will do. Oh. Screwed back too far to take the blue to bulk, not far enough to take it easily to middle. A positional halfway house, which leaves a tough pot either way. Well negotiated, though, by Graham Dot. 22 ahead, so two snookers needed by Walden. And he's not going to bother. And so Graham Dot, that scrappy hard-working terrier-like snooker player from north of the border in typical fashion has taken a 2-1 lead over Ricky Walden now unless the next frame is remarkably quick 
I think it's fair to say the afternoon session here on table one is going to be a little delayed because at the end of each session the the table fitter who does a great job here by the way comes and brushes iron brushes and irons the table so that takes a while as well and the referee has to to reset up the balls so i think the match that's scheduled next which is lee hang against ben wollaston is pretty much almost certain to go on a little late maybe even more than a little late After this, we've got five more round-robin matches for you. And, of course, lots of issues to be determined yet. Over on table two this afternoon, it's a Michael White fest. He plays twice, first against Judd Trump, then against Ricky Walden. And even though he made a terrible start to the group yesterday, if White were to win those two matches, in addition to the... 3-0 win he recorded this morning against Ben Wollaston. Well, at the very least, he might avoid elimination from the tournament. White was like a different player this morning to the one we saw yesterday. He made lots of mistakes in his first three matches, but today, some lovely stuff against Wollaston. Breaks of 113 and 117. to start off on table one this morning. Ricky Walden beat Lee Hang 3-2, thereby ending Lee's unbeaten run in the group. And the other result to tell you about, if you're just joining us, Martin Gould beat Judd Trump 3-2. So Martin Gould is into the semi-finals. Strange old match, that. Trump only scored eight points in the first two frames. Gould led 2-0, aided by a century, and then 54-0 in the third frame. But Trump salvaged it, won the next as well, quite handily. But it was Gould who won the decider. So Dot hoping to put a lid on victory. Walden for the second time this morning. Hoping to go the distance. And that's very loose. In and out of bulk by a mile. Walden trying to make things happen, but not succeeding. useful well. 
should he so desire. <coughs> Dot could make contact with a red. Almost blindfolded here, but what he wants to do is make contact with a specific red on its extreme left-hand side to be able to flick the cue ball back into the safety zone of Bulk. first time he was a little out but he recomputed and did a really good job second time ideal contact Again, this looks like a useful road for Graham Dot this time. Oh, not quite enough pace, or indeed, not quite wide enough to get in behind the brown. Needed more pace to get in behind the green. Needed to be wider for the snooker to be made by the brown. Missed the red by some way. Worse still for Dot. It's a really easy launching red to middle for Walden. And these are the kind of situations in which he normally excels. He's a silky scorer. We said right, actually, at the, the start of the match that he's been involved in a couple of contests against Graham Dot over the years important ones as well where he has been by far the more fluent of the two players and yet ended up defeated I'll actually give you those numbers again in the 2015 World Championship, last 32, dot one ten eight. even though Walden had 135, 104, an 87 and a 78. More recently, in last year's Welsh Open, dot one four three from 3-1 down. On that occasion, Walden had runs of 104, 99, 68 and 50. And I think that shot really typified the match so far for Walden. Into them. And a fraction of an inch. Stopping him from being on a, an easy red and being in a, a frame winning situation. If you've watched the match in its entirety, I think you would be almost certain to agree with me that Walden's not been the luckiest. 
it's not been outrageous luck against him or indeed for Dot. Not kind of in your face flukes or anything like that, but just subtle nudges here and there. And the majority have gone against him. When you get a frame like this and players screw off the bunch and take the white back towards the top cushion, invariably the reds fan out. And quite often you get a situation where a player gets in and makes a few. Not your conventional configuration of reds. And to be honest, the match has not been the norm either. We've seen a few interludes of brilliance. But nothing to set the races, set the pulses racing. Highest break, the only half century so far. The 68 with which Walden drew level at 1 1. Well, there are flukes, and there are flukes. Walden did what he wanted to do there, take the cue ball back towards the top cushion. The red going in was entirely unintentional. It really did require a delicate touch to get the white in behind the black. And Walden failed. Look at that. Already. Six reds in bulk. Well, this time, Walden plays the same shot, screwing back to the top cushion. And again, he knocks in a ball. He didn't wish to. On this occasion, though, it's an illegal shot. The blue is in. Five away. And I'm just wondering, has he left a red to middle? Now seven reds 
in the bulk area of the table. So scoring for Dot here will be quite difficult. Especially if you miss blues of that nature. No excuse for that. Terrible miss. It's after this red that the toil commences. Mind you, given the position of the reds, Walden's 34-point lead is substantial. Nicely developed, not just one red coming out, but three. 90. And already, 39 to the good. Three open reds is all he should need. By the way, Michael White and Judd Trump have got underway, as scheduled at 2 o'clock over on table number 2. If you want to watch that one, by the way, David Hendon is commentating for you. White playing for his Championship League life. Trump playing for a place in the semi-finals. Let's hope that Walton can see the red. By chipping out the other one as well away from the pink, that's greatly helping his cause. 23, thank you. This simple red and any colour, and Dot will need snookers. 36. And just one more red needed to make absolutely sure. Well, it looks as though Ricky Walden's going to get his money's worth in this morning session. Played two matches here on table one, he has. 
both will be going to the wire. Good try, but of course it was academic. He's over the line anyway, regardless. So the break ends at 42. The frame ends as well in favour of Walden. He was 1-0 and 2-1 behind, but on each occasion, he's drawn level, this time at two frames each. So just to confirm over on table two, it's the embryonic stages of the match between Judd Trump and Michael White. And as you can see, Trump has got a really good chance here to put together a, a big number. He's already made three centuries in this group. In fact, he's made nine centuries in this year's Championship League. 510 for his career now, and over 50 this season. He is one of the game's premier break builders. So back to Walden against Dot. We can't say whoever wins this frame will be in the playoffs. They'll be in a pretty good position. But we can't say for sure. Too much snooker still to come before we can start working out who's done what. But with each match, the picture will become a lot clearer. Foul in the mess. Ricky Walden. Four. Too narrow. Rob Spencer quite correctly calls a miss. But with the red to middle, Walden's not going to take it. One. The miss, that is. The initial chance falls to the Englishman. Three. 
makes sense to pop this red because it enables the black to go into the same pocket. Nicely done by Walden. That was a red that could have been missed. He could have potted it and left himself short on the blue, but he does have the angle. Not a great deal, but enough. away from the table in disgust at this level that was a poor positional shot and he knows it In the end, because of his poor position, Walden was reduced to what was a speculative shot-to-nothing double. I can tell you, by the way, Judd Trump has taken the first frame against Michael White with a century. His tenth of this year's Championship League and he's fourth of this group. Typically, deciders in any format, in any tournament, between any two given professionals are cagey affairs, and this falls into that category. You can't blame them. A lot at stake here. OK, it's only £100 per frame one. But it what? It's what it could lead to.
Well, well done, Ricky Walden. Well done. The kiss on the red stops him potting the blue. And that just increases the difficulty a little. I suppose under pressure, in a decider, everything's difficult. Now he played for that red, having looked at it before, and he wasn't quite sure whether the red would pass the blue. Just needs to commit to this. Oh. Well, it didn't pass the blue. It went in off the blue. That was a fluke. A lead of 31 points. Handy. Refusing to rush. Trying to make the the logical choice. Eighteen. Now then, how about the snooker in behind the yellow? Is that viable? And if it is viable, is it worth it? I think he's trying to pot this. Thanks. Oh, yes. And look at the angle on the blue. One good shot here, and it could be frame and match over. When white and red are close together like that, that kind of shot is so tough. Now Walden spotted the blue. 24. The reds have split pretty well. But the yellow's blocking a red that would have gone to the middle pocket. I think the red that looks obvious to pot won't go because of another red. And so Walden... Maybe even contemplating the plan, even with so much distance between the two reds involved. The trouble is for him with a 43-point lead. And all of the balls, reds and colours included, in the open, he doesn't want to make a stupid mistake.
plant taken on. Plant negotiated, ideally. Prospects aren't looking rosy for Dot right now. Not at all. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Oof. I thought the red was going to stay on the table at one point. Seemed to come to rest and then just about fall in. Thirty-three. Can you believe it? End of break unless he takes on another even more risky plant. A break of 39, the lead is 58, 67 still there. If a couple of colours were safe and a red or two, I think he might be tempted by this plant. But given where the remaining balls are, it might be very unwise. Well, it looks as though he's trying to kill this off in one go. You see, very clever, very clever. He played that as a shot to nothing, holding the cue ball behind the red. And now he's 59 to the good with 59 on the table. So with four reds, four blacks and all the colours, the best that Graham Dodd can do is to force a respotted black. And now the modus operandi for Walden will be surely to put a colour safe and play a containing shot at the same time. Blue ball. Ricky Walden, 40. Well, not bad, especially when you consider that Dot has to pot blacks exclusively with all of the reds that are left. Now, in potting this one from distance, which he's quite capable of doing, how can he hold on the black? So, Walden, 58 to the good, 51 on. Dot needs not just the snookeries laid here, but another one as well. Well, 
Mind you, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Ooh, Walden came close to leaving a free ball there. The difference now 52, 51 on. Dot needs just a single snooker. to use that most overused of snooker cliches all the eggs are in one basket the pink has to go in and it does the frame's still alive Some. Grimlock seven. It's been a morning of resilience and defiance from Ricky Walden. He was 2-1 down against Lee Hang when that one 3-2. He was 2-1 down in this match. And he's on the verge of winning 3-2, but still not quite there yet. Doesn't matter about potting a pink for Dot. By knocking this one in, he still only needs one snooker. After this, the difference would be 38 with 35 on. Well, he had a really good chance there to lay a tough, tough snooker in behind the black. He seemed to snatch at the shot, and in the end got nowhere near. I think it was going to be a snooker anyway, but the bump off the middle pocket absolutely rubber stamped the snooker. And Graham Dot has gone from being hard done by to apologising himself. What a superb shot from Graham Dot. The perfect line, the perfect pace. This is a tough one to hit. Make no mistake. Suddenly the pendulum of the frame has swung violently. Walden would be feeling a whole lot more secure if a couple of colours were safe, I can tell you. Great shot. Great shot. But 
but this is the the dot we know and love. He just won't let go. He's stubborn to the core. The pink is doing Walden's bidding. Oh, oh. and the in-off oh. means the dot needs two snookers again. And that is that. Well, what a gritty contest it was. No great fluency from either the high break. In fact, only one over half a century. 68 from Walden in the second frame. But he came from 2-1.